Let's talk about the closures which makes the Swift some of the features really powerful and everything couldn't be possible in those functions without the closure. So yes, they are that much of important and yes, that much of simple as well once you understand what things are going and what to expect and what not to. So what are the closures? Now I would start by saying closures are, closures are simply special type of functions or rather you can also hear the term which says functions are special type of closure. But regardless of that, these both are functions but some special categories. They do the same stuff. They both are the self-contained block of functionality that can be passed around and reused in the code. So yes, both of them are the same and you might have already heard this uh, closures but with a different name. If you are coming from an Objective-C background, you might have already heard about the blocks. If you are coming from languages like Python, you might have already heard about the lambdas out there. So yes, exactly the same. So how to define a closure and in order to define a closure, there is a neat trick which I always use. Now, if you want to define anything as a closure, just define it as a function. Yes, as simple as it is. And then let's try to convert that. So you can see in the line number six, I have got a function which says hello and it just says print, I say hello and that's it. Now, if you want to convert this, this particular six to line number eight as a closure, all you have to do, the closure don't have any name. So that's it. If I get rid of that and that is my first and very short closure, the most basic one. Of course, it is popping us an error and the error is simply we don't, we cannot use it, the closure like that. So we need to understand how we can use that. And let me bring that guy back out here. And we need to also understand there is a special type of definition of the function which expects the closure. Now we have already seen that func and hello 10 times is a pretty simple function with the exception of this guy out there. And what this guy is saying out there, the important feature is this one. Now this is a syntax of telling the function that expect a closure as a date as an argument out there and that is what you should be. And notice one more strange thing, there is an underscore. Now this feature is actually being implicitly added in the Swift 2 and it was not there in the Swift 1.2. And let me tell you for all those guys who are coming out from a big degrees like masters and or maybe PhDs and doctorate and all of that. Now you might have already studied a subject that says modern compiler design or modern compiler optimization. Now believe me that when there is an underscore and this is being a special case where you want to track the index of all the elements but you do not want to use those particular indexes. Now when we study those modern compiler optimization, this makes the language pretty fast and if you will test it onto a variety of benchmark tools, you will understand that yes, it, it does make a lot of difference. Okay, for those extraordinary guys, let me come back out here. So what we are having here is we are saying that there would be a closure and that would be of type inferred as simply as a simple function or I would rather be technically specific as a closure. So just pass on a closure out there. So notice the function is really simple. It says hello 10 times. We are passing on a function inside that and after that we are just looping through the function 10 times. As simple as it sounds. And notice at the line number 16, I'm calling out this hello 10 times. And since this is a, a special function which expects a closure, I need to pass on a function inside as a parameter. So hello 10 times and inside the bracket, I'll say hello. Okay, good so far. So it is calling it out there and it is being get out there at the 10 time. If I open that up, right click out here, value history, it just prints out the hello 10 time. Okay, good, nothing extraordinary. But what about how we can utilize the feature of the closure? Now, it is not always required by the programmer to declare their function first of all, then uh, pass on that. We rather would like to have we rather like to do something like this. And if I get rid of this, now this is my simplest closure. I would like to press Command X to cut it. And instead of the hello, I would like to directly paste it out here. And notice it works really fine. So yes, you can pass on the functions on the go and these are known as the closure, but this is not at all technically correct. If you want to make it technically correct, you have to define it explicitly. You have to say that yes, I am aware of the closure and I'm passing on it. Now, technically it would not make much difference, but it should be syntactically correct. So I need to say that yes, I am aware that I am passing a simple and there is again a keyword that is said in. 
When I save that, notice now it is technically correct and syntactically correct as well. Now, always and always try to be syntactically correct whether it really matters on the screen or not because when it comes to the optimization of the application, these small things make a lot of difference. Okay, good so far. Now we have understood how we can create our own custom uh, closures and try to use them inside the functions and all of that. But there are a lot of places where you do not need the closures. And in fact, uh, there are a lot of keywords which helps you to organize the stuff and expect closure. So what are these ones? One of them is the sort. Now sort has got a lot of history out there in the Swift. Uh, simply when the starting days from the Swift, from one at the pre-launch, the one, 1 1.2 and the two, every time they are messing around with the sort and I'm expecting that finally they have stabilized and <laughs> similar stuff. But again, I'm not sure that they are quite ready with the sort function yet. But I'm expecting that this two version is much better. I am I have actually tested that out. So this version is much, much better as compared to the one and 1.2. So what it says, let's say I'm defining an array with the names and it is having a couple of names, any random name. I have just directly chosen the names from the Apple documentation. Feel free to go it. Our focus is to understand that uh, simply how we can utilize that. So I'm having a function that says backwards. This function is simply having a string as S1 and S2 as a string. Now again, there is an underscore out here. If I get rid of that, now again, it really doesn't make a matter of mistakes or any error is being popped out. So it's all on you. Now, usually the documentation says that if there are two uh, variables or two parameters being passed down, just make sure there is an underscore out there. Again, technically and syntactically being correct, I have just put it out. Now notice it says that I'll return a Boolean. This is all at the return sign. So this is a function expecting two string and returning a boolean and we are comparing s1 and s2 which are the strings. So how we can utilize? Now this is the function being defined. Of course, I could have done exactly the same. There is a names dot sort and again reverse is just a variable. Just forget about it. Focus on the right side. There is a names. I'm accessing the array and I'm accessing the dot sort functionality. This guy is really huge. You can pass a tons of thing inside it. Right now I have passed the backwards, which is just a function. I could have done exactly the same. I could have just directly copied that, uh, deleting all these and just passed on a closure inside that. And notice there are some shorthand methods of closure because I've, if I'll be doing again that, that would be simply a repetition. So let's try to understand what are the other shorthand methods. Now notice there is a shorthand method that says S1 and S2, these are two strings in S1, greater than s2. So this is another one way. Now you could also have placed a return keyword in there and it will not get you an error, but why to put an in return when you can get rid of that. And again, it's officially being documented. So we are not uh, trying to get around. We are just trying to understand how shortly we can done the stuff. Now this is one of the sort method which we can use. And notice these curly braces. Now, whenever you see these curly braces inside the parenthesis, notice we are passing a closure. So quite a good hint to you. And after that, we have got again the sort method being called. And this time we are just saying a dollar zero and is greater than dollar one. This is again an impressive stuff. Now, I could have ne uh, never expected that Swift will get this much of simplicity out there really really but it's not that much easy to use i would say uh, for the beginners try to not get into that but for the experienced programmer this is really a marvelous piece of choice if you really want to do and one of my favorite ones let's say i want to use the sort there is just a less than and greater than sign if you really want to do this stuff and this is impressive now if i just change the sign notice at the right hand side all of my values are being transformed from an incrementer sort to a decrementer sort and really that's really really easy as simple as you can imagine so really the sort functionality is really simple i would definitely suggest you to go ahead and look at the documentation and most of the things i have covered here but still there is a huge documentation for sort itself okay closures are important hard to avoid makes you makes your life easy when you have them but it's it takes a little bit of while to understand them or to get a mastery in them but i would say try to use them and try to have that